soon as we get around this cape, we're going to duck into the anchorage. So here we are on a random beach at Hinchinbrook Island, and Troy is up a tree getting coconuts. With the weather looking good to sail back to the mainland, we prepared for a goodbye dive on our last day at Holmes Reef. Summer out in the cold Your heart is frozen and you've lost your soul Summer out in the cold You threw Here you might notice visual distortion caused by warm water cascading off the reef top and mixing with the cooler water. There are a number of large coral trout patrolling the edge of this moving water looking to snap up injured or unwary bait fish.
As this is normally the wave impact zone, there is noticeably less coral, but a great variety of fish species. Just had some ham cheddar curing for five days, so salt, sugar, and garlic. We had a pork belly and it's been squished down real flat. Got all the moisture out, and now I'm gonna go hang it in the shade, in the wind, in the shade. Yeah, it's nice and breezy. Yeah. We don't mind seabirds resting on the boat when they have no alternative, but we do prefer that their bums aim outside the boat. <laughs> This guy eventually saw a reason. A little bit of a booby problem. It's a problem most people would probably be happy with. <laughs> we lost the favourite Rapala yesterday. Day before yesterday. It didn't rack up too much of a body count before it ran afoul of a uh, Holmes Reef, what I think is a dog tooth channel. <laughs> yeah, I think we caught about four fish on it. I think we caught three on the way down and then we caught that tuna on the way out. Mm. Well, past this, uh, past this the lure that we're going to be using today, Pascal. This is a, it's a minnow lure but it's bibless but it's still going to dive and you can tell where the towing point there is just before a flat part. So it'll want to tow like that and it'll dive down, it's quite heavy. So what we'll do is, as we leave here, just as we go off the drop off, we're going to be, um, we're going to be cruising where we go south and we'll just zigzag out into the deep blue and back up onto the shallow along that contour. Well that's our time done at Holmes Reef. Had a little bit of anxiety leaving when we saw a few more good dive spots that we had to, had to go without exploring. But now we've got uh, a 90 mile cruise back um, just to get to the outer barrier. And we're gonna stop there for a quick look around and then go on to Hinchinbrook. So this is pretty much us now. It's, it's a far cry from smashing down the coast. So I'll give you the big tip. We're doing about five to six knots um, just on a just on a beam reach 
So we're making a little more southerly than what I would normally do, just in case um, it swings. You know, the wind backs the compass as this um, as this pressure system moves towards New Zealand. But otherwise, all we have to do is, if we're a bit too far south to to get through the gap, <laughs> we'll just come about. So it'll be okay. What I don't want to do for a long time is claw my way to weather. So. in the morning and I've been on watch for the last two and a half hours and um, it's just been really nice. We're going by average speed of about five knots and we've got the wind across the beam and we're all performing really well. Like the wind would only be about 10 to 15 knots and it's been like that all night and we've just been keeping really really good speed. Uh, we'll be heading into Hinchinbrook Island this afternoon, we've just crossed through the, the outer reef. Island, which would be really nice. Some sheltered island protection is what we need, a nice calm anchorage to rest up. Great. Well, Pasky, is this more what you thought? Sailing in Queensland would be like rather than 600 miles to weather. Yeah, this is pretty <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll come into Hinchinbrook now um, and we'll duck around this cape. We'll throw the anchor in, probably be about four o'clock. I think we'll call it a day and then um, we can do a bit of beach walking, look for some coconuts, stuff like that. I don't think we'll be climbing Mount Bowen. It's no. 11, 1100 metre or it goes up a K in the air. So It's very rainforesty in pretty thick and it's pretty Run. sheer. So yeah. I think we'll stick to the uh, the lower lower levels, but there should be a fair bit to see here. It's quite pretty. that sail set wing on wing we probably could have thrown the spinnaker up in the air but what's going to happen is as soon as we get around this cape we're going to duck into the anchorage so this is sort of easy, easy just to just furl up I can unclip it and then we can uh, just go in under the mainsail everything will be good so if it's only an hour's run if we had a little bit more I think we might have popped the spinnaker up yeah it's uh, been a while since we've popped the chute yeah so we were gonna we were gonna do that last night but we would have gone so we would have gone too fast we opted to go a bit slower and get through the reef during the daytime, just uh, a little bit safer. But it was very tempting to, to throw the spinnaker up last night because we would have we would have just blasted in, but we would have got in while the reef was quite dark. Well, we've made it to Hinchinbrook, and there's quite a few cats here. It's the first time in. A long time that we've been anywhere semi-remote and there's been boats around. Been sailing for uh, about 28 hours I think um, and we've put the anchor down at, in the northern end of Missionary Bay on Hinchinbrook Island. The first clansmen no doubt that we'll see of many now we're back on the east coast. You might wonder why there's a fence around a camping area. Well, it's for crocodiles. <laughs> Pascal's going on a tour of inspection. Let the crocodiles in. Now this is an unexpected treasure. We did not expect to see this here. We They've... thought we were going to have to read water in Cardwell. Yeah. So it says untreated water. Treat before use, but look, it's rainwater. <laughs> 
might have strain through a bit of leaf litter, but that's it. Yep, and we've we've seen that it's overflowing, yeah. so we don't really mind taking a jerry can or two out of this. No drinking the rainwater. <laughs> For Pete's sake. Well, this is an unexpected facility to find out here on the bush on a, a remote island in Queensland. But they've done a really nice job. Well preserved hardwood, it's been put together nicely. It's got a, a hybrid flushable sort of composting toilet in there. There's no smell, so well done. Parks and Wildlife have done a great thing. Nice little water tank involved. Nice little three-stage hybrid composting toilet. Just found this little nest. Hmm. No omelette in there? No. It emerges from the forest. Mm -hmm. I really like your bush, uh, bush walking outfit today, Pascal. Thanks. No shoes. Stick. Pretty standard, isn't it? Behold, a clue. Well, Pasky, it's the old fork in the road. Judging by this sign <laughs> and the look of that, we can either go up that uphill through a whole bunch of pickets or we can follow the sound of gentle surf breaking on a beach nearby. <laughs> what do you want to do? I think we go to the beach. So here we are on a random beach at Hinchinbrook Island and Troy is up a tree getting coconuts. Damage of the local white tail rats, they beat us to this coconut. Here's another one. They're pretty tough critters. Rat party. <laughs> Look at them. Every nut that falls down, they hook into. Mm. Good one. Young coconut. A grade nut. One slice of coconut skin. Scraps all the jelly out. What about me? See, as soon as you've got a flat spot to rest there, it makes it so much easier, eh? Mm. So that's what you're really aiming for. You want that initial one with your fingers right back, you give it a good whack. And then you've got a grippy bit. As soon as you've tilted, yeah, like that. Oh, I'm nearly there. Oh, doing good. Is that yeah, the hard that's bit? it. So you just chip away that hard bit now. That's it. Give it some give it a bit of hardware. It's a hard nut to crack. Oh! <laughs> swing! <laughs> oh, 
there it is. Yeah. See, so that's it. And now you just use the point. Get him oh, out. I didn't waste any. No, you done real good. How does it taste? Very good. Mmm, <laughs> yum. This is better than the one we found on the ground. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fresh. Does it taste better for you getting into it? Yes. Good job. I'm going to have to get into them now. Yeah. Next step is climbing the tree. I reckon if we gave you a cleaver, <laughs> your French blood would just take over and you'd be into that in seconds. <laughs> if you're going to be drinking a coconut, this is the sort of tropical beach you want to be doing it on. last chance to grab a free range sailing t-shirt. Our bonfire campaign ends in 24 hours. If you'd like to grab a t-shirt, there's a link on screen and in the description. Thank you for tuning into Free Range Sailing. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it really helps get our video out to more viewers. If you'd like to keep track of us in real time, there is links in the description to our Facebook and Instagram page as well as loads of other great information that you might find useful.